and um, there's people everywhere uh, tonight uh, that, that have never heard the name of, uh, of Jesus. Many have never understood the plan of salvation. I, I was like that for many years, raised in a church. Didn't know, never knew the word born again, didn't know what the word saved was, and I thought I had to be a good little boy, get baptized, and maybe one day I'd be able to go to a place called heaven, but we know that the Bible, that's not what the Bible said. And, uh, there, and, and we know tonight that there's many folk uh, in the area where we live, you know, all around us tonight, they're just like that. And many folk that are broken and hurting and wounded, and they need to understand that there is hope tonight in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't matter what they've done, don't matter who they are, I'm so thankful uh, that, there, that, that there is hope. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. And I was thinking about, as we shared a little bit about it this morning, I was thinking about this past Wednesday night when we was in the jail. I, I, I can still see that man's face in my mind when he came to the cell, when he came to the, when he came to, to where the bars was, he, he, he just about stuck his nose through it, but tears running down his face, and he got saved that night, and uh, wanted us to do what we could to reach us. He's got three boys, and uh, do what we can to reach them. We don't do what we can to try to reach folk, and um, wouldn't that be something? Uh, see his children come in, get saved, and, and then dad, and daddy gets out, and the Lord just puts it all together. Uh, we, we serve a listen, folk. We serve a big God tonight, and I, and I thank God for that. But I. I want you, if you would, tonight, uh, for a few minutes, uh, uh, to take your Bible and turn with us to the book of Jude. We, we have been looking at this for the last two Sunday nights, and I love this little book. Yes. And I thought when we looked at it a couple weeks ago that we'd get through the f a few verses, but we're, I'm still... I, this is probably not the right kind of saying. I, I want to say stuck in the mud, not stuck in the mud, but stuck in the book. And uh, but I want to look here tonight in in Jude. And let's look here in verse number one. The Bible said, "Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Christ Jesus, or in Jesus Christ, and called, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied." Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness or an unbelievable bridled lust, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege that you give us, Lord, to be able to come back to the house of God one more time. Uh, Lord, thank you for what you did this morning. Thank you, Lord, for meeting with us tonight. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our brother and his wife, Lord, that uh, had the ministry with Pensacola. Lord, I pray you'd build a hedge of safety around them and protect them, Lord, as they travel. And may, Lord, you use them in a mighty way. And Father, we, we thank you, God, down through the years we've seen how you've used that school that college. Uh, Lord, uh, not only in the homeschooling, but many young people have surrendered their lives and Lord, uh, followed you to the, to, the, to the destination where you'd have them to go. And Lord, that is our goal here at Open Door, that we'd continue to have folk come in, get saved, surrender their lives, and follow you and, and be that individual, go to that place wherever you have them to go. And I pray that you'd bless us, Lord, here at Open Door. May you use, us, use this place in a mighty way. And Lord, as we think about our upcoming Jubilee, I pray, Lord God, your blessing be upon it. I pray, Father, that you would give each uh, preacher the message that we need. Uh, Lord, we realize that we can have a message, we can have a song, but Lord, we need the power of God. And I pray, Lord, that you'd breathe upon us. Help us, Lord, tonight now as we look in your word for a few moments. I pray that you would, may you fill us full of the Spirit of God, give us liberty and power, and may you do what needs to be done, Father, and we'll thank you, and we'll praise you for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We look here tonight, folk, in the in the book of Jude once again, and, and just as a reminder of some of the things that we have seen over the last couple of weeks, we understand that Jude is, is, is one of the shortest books in all of God's Word, 25 verses, in fact. And, uh, and the primary focus all the way through 
uh, is apostasy unmasked. Uh, as we mentioned a couple weeks ago, one of our objectives, one of our goals as a child of God ought to be what the, you know, what the, you know, the, the Bible said here in, in verse 1, we see that the, the title of Jude, where it said, Jude the servant of Jesus Christ. And of course our goal ought to be tonight to be a servant, a, a bond slave for the, for the glory of God. And, and Jude was that. And uh, as we look at this book tonight, we understand, we think about this idea uh, of apostasy. Uh, we understand that we, as we mentioned, that it was a, that a, a fallen away. Uh, and, and, and apostate, as we think about that, are, are people that turn from sound doctrine. Thank God for the Word of God, folk. And I'm glad that we've got a Bible that is inspired, infallible, inerrant. And we know, we know today that there, there are many that have turned from doctrine that is, that is sound. And uh, one of the things, one of our objectives is, is as people come in, as we have our vacation Bible school, our RU program, many of the things that we do, is we want people to know, my friend, that this is a life-giving book. Amen? And, and that there is truth in this book. That the book that the Word of God is truth. But we find, and we know tonight, that there's many that have turned from sound doctrine. And as we've read, as we've looked through these verses, we see the declaration of it. Uh, because if you'll notice there, uh, in uh, verse number 3, it said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you. Why, why was it needful? Well, he explains it, and exhorts you uh, that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. There are some things worth fighting for. There are some things that we need to stand for. He said that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was delivered unto the saints. And then he gives the reason why. He said, for there are certain men crept in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men and they've turned the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So we see tonight as we think about this idea of apostasy, we see the declaration of it. And then not only do we see the declaration of it, we see where it gives a description of us. He, he, he tells us a little bit about it, how there's these men that have come in. And, and then we see not only a declaration of it and a description of it, but we see a determination in the midst of it. I believe that Jude was determined, my friend, to be a servant and to do what he could, my friend, to draw a line in the sand and make a stand for the glory of God. And if there's ever a day, if there's ever an hour where there needs to be men and women, boys and girls, my friend, that will be determined to stand for the truth. It's the day and age which we live in. And then I, then I want to say this tonight, not only there's a declaration of it, description of it, and determination in the midst of it, we, we find that there's a deliverance despite of it. And, and where do we find that deliverance? Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm glad that the Lord, my friend, can deliver us from anything. It, it, it does not matter. But, but if you'll notice tonight, he actually, this, this idea of deliverance, determination, we, we, we see some, some thoughts, and we didn't read these verses, but if you go down to verse 20, he said, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, uh, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourselves in the, in, the, uh, in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ on eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference. So we see these words, these uh, uh, participles, this, uh, the, the, the building, the keeping, the looking, and, and, and having and making, we listen, we can make a difference as a result of that. And we know tonight that even though that there is a falling away, that Jude challenges us that we might do what we can to make a difference. Now, over, over the last couple of weeks, we, we've given an explanation about concerning apostasy. We talked about a heavenly relationship. And that heavenly relationship is through the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but isn't it, isn't it amazing tonight that we could have a relationship with the God of glory. And that only comes through 
the shed blood of the Son of God, this heavenly relationship. And then we, we brought out the idea of earthly relationships, despite darkness, delusion, and uh, demons within the church, and, and, and doctrines, my friend, that, uh, that are not biblical. We find that the, that the Lord gives us assurance. And notice what He says there, he, the, the, the idea that He called us, that He loves us, that He keeps us. And so we find here tonight where Jude, we, 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 the, the, the thought of edification in the midst of apostasy. And, and so I want to give you a couple things tonight to think about in, in regards to this. This idea of edification in the midst of, of apostasy. Basically there's three basic terms that Jude uses in regards to believers. Notice in the very first verse. Notice what he says there. He said, Jude the brother of Jesus, Jude the servant of Jesus Christ, and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father. Amen. Now, this is one of the terms that he uses, this idea of sanctification. Being sanctified, sanctified, sanctified by God the Father. Now, when we think about that word sanctified tonight, what does that mean? It means to be set apart. Yeah, in, in other words, it's an outcome of a result of salvation. Listen, I want to tell you, when we got saved by the grace of God, we were sanctified, we were set apart yeah. for His glory yeah. and His honor. See, the Bible said in, in, a, in a, 1 Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 2, it said, elect according to the foreknowledge of, of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, uh, and, and peace be multiplied. We see that idea five times in the Word of God. Now, when we think about sanctification tonight, I will give you three, three thoughts in regards to that. First of all, there's what I would call personal sanctification. Uh, personal sanctification. When, 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 does that, when, when does that occur? Well, we, we read that verse, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, and obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Personal sanctification. I'm glad 43 years ago when the Lord reached out and saved me, my friend, when I was nothing but a long haired drug addict, I'm glad that He lifted me up out of the miry clay, put my foot on the solid rock, established my going, put a new song in my heart. And I want to tell you, thank God for that personal sanctification. He set me apart. Amen. Amen? So we see this idea uh, of personal sanctification. Uh, but then I want to say there's something else here tonight in, in regards to this, what we would call progressive sanctification. And what does that mean? Basically what it means is this, is living the life. Uh, take your Bible, hold your place right there, and turn over uh, to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. <laughs> And verse number three. First Thessalonians chapter number four. And verse number three. Progressive sanctification. Live in the life. What do we mean by that? In other words, every one of us tonight that are saved, we're works in progress. We ought to be able to look back and see where we have grown in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That there are some people tonight, my friend, that are stuck in the mud. And one of the reasons being is because is that they are not in the Word like they need to be. They're not on their knees seeking the face of God. They're not faithful to the house of God. And doing the things that we know, my friend, that it takes to be the man woman, boy, or girl that God would have us to be. But listen, our objective, our goal ought to be that we ought to continue to be moving forward as we approach that day when He takes us home. Amen? Amen. Listen, folks, we ought to be able to look back Amen. and see where we have grown in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Well, in other words, we've learned some things. We, you know, God has worked in our heart and our life, and we're, we're not the same old boy or the same old girl that we used to be. But, but He's worked in our life. And we find in, in, in uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, in verse number 3, uh, he, this is what He said. He said, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess what? Yes. His vessel in sanctification and honor. 
In other words, what is he talking about? In other words, there ought to be a growing up in our life. In other words, there ought to be a purity there. Abstain from the things, my friend, that would cause us to drift away and to fall into sin and bring reproach to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, what a tragic thing that would be. I mean, you think about this night. You know, Brother Jimmy sang that song a while ago, Bring Them In. Right. And, you know, I, you, you think about your testimony for a moment. I, I remember when I got saved 43 years ago, I came home that night, and first thing I did, I picked up the telephone. I called my mom, my dad, my brothers, my grandmother, my grandfather. And I said, hey, I just want to tell you, I got saved tonight. I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. Yeah. And, and some of them, all, my, some in, even in my own family, they laughed at me. They thought I'd lost my mind. And I'm sure some of them may still think I've lost my mind. And, and then after I talked to my family, I began to call all my friends, the buddies, the guys that, that I ran, ran around with, and they say, look, the Lord's done a work in my life. I'm not going to hell. I've been saved by the grace of God. And, uh, and, and they did not understand that. But what, what, a tragic, what, what, a, what a tragic thing that it would be, my friend, to drift from the things of the Lord and not grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and get caught up in the world, my friend, and a Lord back out into the world and walk down a road of sin and reproach, my friend, that would, that would bring uh, reproach upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it would call, you know what would happen? People in our own family, those people that we've talked to, those people that we've witnessed to, they would come back and say, well, I thought you was a Christian. Right. I thought you were saved. I thought you were, uh, you, you, you were somebody different now. What's happened? Well, the Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Listen, I'm glad that he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. I have not arrived yet, but I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm a work in progress. I, I'm a candidate yeah. for God to do something in my life. And, and, and basically, that's what Jude's saying. Yes, when I got saved, there's that personal sanctification, but then there's that progressive sanctification. Well, you know, we're a work in progress. He, listen, he's still working on us. We're living the life. And then there's what I would call ultimate sanctification. What does that mean? That means that, uh, well, just a, just a few, just a couple weeks ago, one of the men in our church, Brother Bruce Rains, I still remember the saying that he said, just about every time that I went to his house, he looked at me and said, Preacher, if I don't see you again down here, I'll see you over yonder. Yeah. How, could he, how could he say that? Because he knew the Master of the Sea. Amen. He knew the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. And what he was saying was, one day I'm going to be ultimately sanctified. In other words, this body of clay, this, uh, in, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, I, I will tell you, we'll, we'll lay down this body and we'll receive a glorified body. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I, I was uh, after church today, uh, we were talking and, and uh, James and Brittany, we share with me a little bit about their glasses, and we're talking about eyesight. And uh, and and you know, as I look out here today, there's there's quite a few people in our church got glasses on. And uh, you know, the neat thing about it is, one day when you go to heaven, you praise God, you won't have to have no glasses. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, whether you could, you, you may be far-sighted, you may be near-sighted, you may have a, 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 a cataracts. I, I don't know all the eye diseases that they that they have. But won't it be wonderful, my friend, uh, to be able to live in a place called heaven and have a, a ultimate eyesight? I think about Fanny Crosby. I think about many of the saints of God down through the years that wrote some of the most tremendous songs that are in our hymn book, and they talk about sight. That they've never seen him, but they've seen him. You follow what I'm saying? In other words, they've got that insight to the Lord. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? The very first person that they ever see right. be the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. We know tonight that there's those, my friend, that uh, can't see, and then there's others that they can't hear. Right. Others can't walk. And others, my friend, they have had afflictions in, in, in their life for a long, long time. I, I met a man just the other day that was involved in... Uh, he, he was actually an all-star football player with the school of Salem many years ago. And he, and he was involved in a terrible accident, uh, probably, I would say, 25, 30 years ago. And uh, in, in fact, if, if I remember correctly, he is the clerk of court of Salem. 
and you go in there and you talk to him. Listen, he's not, he didn't throw in the towel and quit. But, he, but, he's, but he's still working. And, and, and you talk to him, he'll lay down on his desk like this. He's got a, he's got a suit and tie on. And, and, he, and he lays down on his desk and he'll sit there. He said, what would you say? And he'll, he'll sit there and write. And, and he'll talk to you. I, I mean, it, it was absolutely amazing. But can you imagine? And to be honest with you, I, we didn't get into the things of God. But if that man is to get saved, what it's going to be like to get a glorified body. Amen, folks. And, and, and so what I, what, I, what I say tonight is, Jude is talking about this idea of sanctified, being set apart. And, and we know that the Bible talks about personal sanctification, uh, progressive sanctification, and, and ultimate sanctification. One day we'll receive that ultimate sanctification when we receive a glorified body. But if, but if you notice there, he said in the, the very first verse, it said, Jude the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father. And then we find a conjunction. And what is that? And what? And preserved. What does that mean? It means we are kept in Christ Jesus. Now, you look at the Greek terminology for that particular word in the perfect tense, this is what it means. It means continually kept. A way of continuing the result of past action. All the way to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we are kept. We can't do the keeping. He's the one that does the keeping. And the Bible said in 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse 4, it says, To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith, unto salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. I, th I think about this statement that Dr. Jerry Vines wrote, and, and it blessed me. It said, Our eternal welfare is carefully guarded by God Himself. Amen. We are His, and nothing or no one will take us from Him. Amen. Listen, I, I want to tell you, we're guarded by God Himself, folks. So, so we see the idea here, even in the midst of apostasy, where He mentions this, the idea of being sanctified. The idea of being kept, preserved. And then we see another word here, the last one of verse number one, in Jesus Christ, and what? And called. Jude wraps up the greeting here, asking God for an abundant increase of the, of the actual Christian virtues. And what are the Christian virtues? When I say a virtue, I mean a strength. What, what are the virtues that we should possess? He gives them to us there in verse 2. And he says, mercy unto you, and peace and love be what, folk? Multiplied. We see the divine order in salutations. Grace tonight always precedes peace. We see the divine order in Jude 1 and 2. Now let's just look at these three words real quick tonight. We see this word mercy. I don't know about you, but I thank God for mercy. Amen. When justice called, mercy answered. Amen. Where should we be tonight? Folks? If we'd be honest, where should we be? We, ought to, we, we should be in hell. But I'm glad that He looked beyond our faults and our failures, and He saw our need. And so thank God for mercy. There, there's been many times I've been to court with people, and uh, there's one judge, to be honest with you, that I, a lot of times I'd go with the individual. I did not really want to be in that courtroom with that individual because I knew that judge was tough. I mean tough. Right. But one thing about that judge, if you look beyond that toughness, he had a softness about him. Let me explain. 
in the in the uh, RU program that we have. And, and I could understand a lot of time there would be somebody that would be uh, Judge Long would give them a sentence. And maybe the first time they went in there, it'd give them six months and suspend maybe three of it. But he'd always do this. He would drop them glasses down on his nose like this. He said, I don't want to see you in here again. That's how he'd do it. Don't let me see you in here again. And I've been with people, I want to tell you, that I'd been in that courtroom with them more than one time. And Judge Long would know it because he, he could read the record. And my, my friend, I want to tell you, if he'd see him a second or third time, I want to tell you, those glasses would seem like they'd always fall, almost fall down on the mouth. He said, I want to tell you something now. I've been good to you, but I gave you six months of suspended three. Now I'm going to give you six months. On, you won't serve all the six, but I'm going to give you six more on top of it. Right. And you talk to many of the inmates. You talk to many of the folk that struggle. I will tell you, they never wanted to go to the court and uh, stand before uh, Judge Long. Am I right, Brother Chip? I, I mean, that's just how it is. But, but I, I want to tell you, thank God for mercy. And I, I, I remember one time, there, there's a young lady that had come to our church, and uh, we, uh, we actually had taken her up to, to, to Rockford, to the ladies' home, and she was there for about three or four months, did pretty good, and, and, then, and then she got out. And when, when she got out, she had an outstanding warrant on her because of uh, a probation violation. I said, well, well you know what you got to do? When you go back to Montgomery County, you might as well just go to the courthouse and turn yourself in. Right. Ain't no need to run him, just go ahead and turn yourself in. That looks better. Right. Then if they got to send a bounty hunter out looking for you. So she, she, she turned herself in. And uh, one thing led to another. She, she, she stood before Judge Long. And uh, he, he was nice to her. And, uh, but he ordered her to drug court. And I want to tell you, she did everything that she could in that drug court. And she graduated from the drug court. And I remember they had a big celebration there at Montgomery County Courthouse. And, and uh, we went there, and it was, on, it was on Channel 7 News. There were delegates that had come in, and they recognized this woman as the first female in Montgomery County to ever graduate from the drug court program. What is that, folk? That's mercy. That's mercy. Mercy is getting what we don't deserve, folk. Because if we got what we deserve, see the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is what? Is death. That means to be separated. But I'm glad after that word death, there's a conjunction. It said, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So when we think about mercy tonight, 261 times we find that word mercy in the Bible. Uh, it's divine pity expressing itself for the needy. It presupposes the need and helplessness. It stands on the threshold of the epistle, introducing a somber picture. See, law is over the door. You go back to Numbers chapter number 15, verses 32 through 36, it talks about the law. Law is over the door, and, and we find death there. And failure, according to James chapter number 2 and verse number 10. But Jesus Christ tonight is the only remedy. How do we know that? Because the Bible said in Galatians 3.24, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. Right. And bring us unto Christ. Why? That we might be justified by faith. Grace tonight, folk, opens the door to undeserved mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Yeah. So Jude talks about that mercy unto you. And then he mentions the second word, peace. The second great Bible word. 400 verses in the Bible deal with that word peace. And there's, uh, uh, there, there's no peace for the wicked, according to Isaiah chapter number 57, verse number 20. But I'm glad the Bible said there in, in Romans 5, one, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Yeah. You remember how it was when you were lost on your way to hell and, and the Lord dealt with you and you felt that Holy Ghost conviction? I thought my heart was going to explode out of my chest. Yeah. But I want to tell you when I got saved there was a calmness there. there, there, was a calmness there. 
Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Then you go over to Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 7. It talks about the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Uh, it shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. D.L. Moody said, This is ours, whom we worry about nothing, and pray about everything, and thank God for anything. It is to garrison our hearts until the Lord comes and take us to our eternal peace. So we see where it says here that we're sanctified by God the Father, preserved in Christ Jesus, and called mercy unto you and peace. And then what's the last one? And love be multiplied. When we think about love tonight, it's the bond that unites believers to their Lord and to one another. You know what the first commandment the Lord Jesus Christ ever gave? I'll read it to you. It said in John 13, 34, 35, it said, A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another. Yeah. Who said that? Jesus, Jesus did. Yeah. In your life, you ever found it difficult to love somebody? Yeah. Hello, anybody home out there? Yeah. What, what did Jesus say? He said, I, I give it to you that you, this new commandment that you love one another. And, and not only did he say that, if you continue to read that verse, he said, You love that individual as I have loved you. How does the Lord love you? It's unbelievable. I can't believe how much he loves me. When I got saved, the reason I got saved, listen, I didn't want to die and go to hell, but I got saved because I could not believe how much. The Lord loved me. Amen. And I still can't believe it. But he said that you love one another as I have loved you. And he said, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. Folks, I, listen, I want to tell you if visitors come into our church Amen. and they see a bunch of snobs in here, Amen. in hatred, yeah. in envy, in strife, well, somebody sit on my pew. Yeah. People can sense that. But they can also sense, my friend, if they walk into a place where, man, there's some people that love one another there. They not only love each other, but they love the Lord. And I believe, my friend, as sinners walk into this place, that is exactly what they ought to feel. They ought to be able to walk out the door and get in the car and say, wow, there was something special there. And that's what Jesus was saying. Uh, we, we think about this tonight. We understand tonight that there's one form, uh, one uh, form or another of love mentioned in the first three verses, and some suggest the absence of love was the reason for apostasy. But, but one preacher said this, when love is absent, men outside the true church lack evidence that we are truly the disciples of Christ. You know, listen, you know what gets to people? I, I remember years ago when I first got saved, one of the first things I did, I, I run a bus route. We'd go out knocking on doors every Saturday, inviting kids to come. And if you ever go down Interstate 85 there between Lexington and Salisbury, North Carolina, you get on 85, look over and you'll see a great big statue like this. It's called Bill's Truck Stop. And there's a man, I guess his name's Bill. I've never asked anybody that worked there. But, he, but, he, but a big old statue there. And right behind that truck stop, I started knocking on doors in a place called the Green and Needles Trailer Park. And I hadn't been saved that long, maybe a couple months. And I was leery and scared and all that stuff. But God began to give me boldness. I'd knock on doors. He started getting kids to come to church. And then there, there, there's this one door that I went to. And uh, there was this mother that was very hateful. And uh, she came up to me out there in the driveway. There, it was like a, uh, a big drive. And she said, you, she said, you can get all these other kids, but don't you bother my kids. Don't, don't, even, don't even bother me. And I'll tell you, that bothered me. Yeah. But I just kept going knocking on her door. I kept dripping on her. And then sometimes she'd slam the door. Sometimes she'd cuss. And then one day she said something. I can't remember what she said. And she just turned around and walked inside. And in fact, I took a step of faith. I stepped right inside the door like this. <laughs> and I said, ma'am, I don't know why you hate me so much. 
but I just come by because we, we love you, but there's a God in heaven that loves you. Amen. And he wants, to, he wants to change your life, and He wants to change your children's life. Right. And then I turned around and walked out and got my car, went back to church. You know what happened? The next day I went over there and took that bus over there to pick up those kids. You know who the first in line was? That mother. Amen. She had her kids there first in line and put them on that bus. Amen. And those kids got saved. Amen. And that mother and people uh, that were tied to that family eventually got saved. I can't explain it. But I want to tell you, you know what that woman saw? She saw that somebody loved her. Right. Somebody cared about her. And I want to tell you, we, you know, I think about that old song we sing every now and then. I'm so glad God saves old sinners. The drunk on the, th uh, the, drunk on the street, the, the thief, my friend, the, the wretch, the vile, the ungodly, what do they need, my friend? They need to understand that there's a God in heaven that loves them and cares about them. When love is absent, men outside the true church lack evidence that we are truly the disciples of Christ. And these words tonight, mercy unto you, and peace and love be what? Be, multipl be multiplied. These words tonight, in closing, they reappear at the close of the book. Look if you would in verse 21, look what it says. Well, verse 20 said, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And then notice what he said. He said, Keep yourselves in the, in, in the love of God. And then verse 21, that same word, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And then in verse 20, he says, Pray it in the Holy Ghost. Do you realize, my friend, the only way we can have the key to peace is praying, Amen. is seeking the face of God. So, tonight, what was Jude telling us? We need to have an upward look, Amen. which is mercy. We ought to have an inward look, which is peace. But we need an outward look which is the work of love that Christ had for each one of us. And our prayer ought to be, Lord, help it to be multiplied. Amen. 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 Let's pray tonight. Father, as we look to You, Lord, we want to thank You so much tonight for the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray these aspects, this idea of sanctification, preservation, being called, mercy, peace, and love. Lord, I pray that You would help us tonight here at Open Door Baptist Church. May we be a people just like that, even in the midst of dark days, in days of delusion, in days of difficulty. We're so thankful that we have a God in heaven that's alive and well. And may you help us tonight to be the people that would live for the Lord Jesus and do what you'd have us to do before we go home to be with you. We ask you now that you'd give each one safety as they go home. Bring us back tomorrow night as we start our Jubilee. We pray, God, that you would have your willing way in it. Thank you, God, for our dear brother and his wife being here tonight. Again, give them safety. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You shake hands tonight.